Good morning. This is a splendid October autumn morning and we're here at the Observatory Science Centre and this has been going since 1990. Previous to that was the Royal Greenwich Observatory which had for 40 years a dominant role in British astronomy. Some of the great British astronomers actually did their observations here including the Sir Isaac Newton telescope which is now decamped to La Palma in the Canary Islands. This video is setting out to show you what has happened since Galileo's great observations with his first telescope. For 400 years we have been involved in producing larger and larger telescopes and in this video we hope to show you what has been learnt and how we've gone from knowing that as far as Ptolemy was concerned everything went round the earth, five planets, the sun and the moon and the stars were just on a crystalline sphere and now we know what stars are made of how many stars there are in the universe that there was a big bang some 13.7 billion years ago how come we have got to this stage I will be looking at 400 years of astronomy with you today so let's go inside now and see what we can see behind me is a very famous mirror it's the 2.5 meter mirror which was part of the Isaac Newton telescope named after the greatest scientist of all time Sir Isaac Newton now, if you have a look at my eye, you can see my pupil, and in this daylight, it's probably two to three millimeters in diameter. However, at night, when you become light adapted after some 20 minutes, you can start seeing over 2,000 stars. But with a telescope that Galileo had, and indeed these modern day binoculars, 30 millimeters in diameter, that can collect 10 times more light and that means you can see something in the order of a hundred thousand stars. But this big monster is able to see a hundred thousand times more than what Galileo's telescope could. And more importantly, the eye can only register over about a tenth of a second. Something like this can collect photons after hour after hour, thousands upon thousands of seconds, and thereby collecting over 10,000 million times more photons than the human eye could. Now I'm going to show you what the biggest telescopes are looking like, just by pacing out the 10 meter Keck telescope. Well, here we are again at the Observatory Science Center. We've just seen the Sir Isaac Newton mirror, only two and a half meters. I say only because in the last 15 years, there have been several telescopes built over 10 meters, including the two telescopes known as the Keck 1 and the Keck 2. Both of them are 10 meters in diameter, and both of them will be collecting 16 times more light. To see what 10 meters looks like, I'm just going to pace it out now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Imagine a mirror as large as this. And that is being able to see galaxies that were first formed in the first 700 million years of our universe. However, on the horizon is far more exciting developments. There is the extremely large telescope built by a European consortium, 42 meters across. There's the 30 meter telescope, and there is the giant Magellan telescope, both of which will be roughly 30 meters across. So let's have a look to see what sort of things they might be able to see, and that will be happening in the next 10 years up to 2020. Well, here we are again at the Observatory Science Centre, and this is one of my favourite exhibits. It shows you two parabolic dishes, and it will collect sound at the focal point. Now, all the big telescopes are made of mirrors that have um, parabolic shapes and bring all the light to a focal point. 
Now, behind me is the Sir Isaac Newton Dome. It no longer has the telescope. The telescope is in the Canary Islands, La Palma. However, as I said in my previous statement, that the biggest telescope that's going to be built in the next 10 years is the European Extremely Large Telescope, some 42 metres in diameter. Now, let's imagine what the 42 metre dish is like. Let me pace it out for you now to get you an idea of such a large telescope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This at the moment is the largest telescope in the world, 12 metres. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. This telescope will be built in the next 10 years. It's the giant Magellan telescope. 2930. This is the size of the 30 meter telescope, but the biggest one will be 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. 42 meters at a cost of over one billion euros. After the Big Bang, there was 500 million years when there was absolutely no light from stars or galaxies. And then the first galaxies formed. This telescope, this size of a telescope, will be able to record photons from those first galaxies and the first stars. Some of them were extremely large and enriched the universe in all the elements we know. They were giant stars of over 200 solar masses. Galileo's telescope had a lens not much bigger than this, just up to four centimetres across. But of course it was much better than the human eye. The reason why telescopes haven't got much bigger on the refracting side is simply because to hold a lens this big, weighing many, many tonnes, you'll find that at the edges the weight of the lens makes the whole lens bend or sag under the weight. But the largest lens ever is the Yerkes 1 meter or 40 inch telescope. However, as I said with the reflecting telescope, first mentioned by Sir Isaac Newton, the telescope has just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so this is the type of telescope which will be used from now on. And I'm afraid this piece behind us, the Thompson 26 inch, is no longer being used professionally. Although people can come down to the Observatory Science Centre and are able to be shown the telescopes on an evening and be able to see some of the wonders that Galileo and other astronomers have seen. It was very difficult for Galileo to overthrow the ideas of the Roman Catholic Church. Basically, for 1,500 years, Ptolemy's ideas ruled supreme. Everything went round the Earth. The Earth was the supreme object. The Sun, the Moon, and the five known planets all orbited the Earth. Now, let's do the typical model that we see in schools in which we decide that a meter is 100 million kilometers. If this is the Sun, then the Earth will be one and a half metres away. On that scale, Pluto, which is now consigned to be an icy dwarf planet, is 59 metres away where that dish is. 
But unfortunately, to understand how far the stars are away, you'd have to walk 420 kilometers to get to the nearest star on this scale. Remember, each time I walk one pace, one meter, that's 100 million kilometers. So walk up to Newcastle 420 kilometers away. Now, the Milky Way galaxy is 100 billion stars, and it's over 100,000 light years in diameter. So, if we're going to start considering the universe, we're going to have to change our scale drastically. How about one meter now is 100,000 light years? And if this is our spiral galaxy, the nearest one will be some 25 meters away, the Andromeda, much larger than our spiral galaxy. However, where is the edge of the universe? The Big Bang actually occurred 13.7 billion years ago. And in that time, light and the universe has expanded. So, if we're looking at 13.7 billion light years in any one direction, this is the sort of walk you'd have to do from here to Southampton. In other words, every time I take a pace, I am walking 100,000 light years. If I walk to Southampton, that is where the edge of the universe is. There are 100 billion galaxies. There are 100 billion stars in each galaxy. There are more stars than there are grains of sand in all the beaches on the planet Earth. Right, now I'll give you one final thought. This is, I think, far more interesting than all those distances. You see, who's actually come up with these ideas? Obviously Galileo, Newton, Einstein, etc. And the brain that's done all the work could be fitted into the palm of my hand. Now I'm 52 years of age, and if I decide that one year equals one millimetre, I could represent my lifetime as 52 millimetres. On that scale, Galileo is just a mere 400 millimetres away. Jesus, who was born 2,000 years ago, is two meters away. And the builders of the great pyramids in Egypt are four and a half meters away. Dinosaurs existed in London, 65 kilometers away. But if you want to go back to when the Earth and the Sun and the solar system was formed, you would have to walk up to John O'Groats each pace a thousand years. Then you have to walk from John O'Groats back to East Sussex, the beautiful town of Hurstmanshire in East Sussex. Then I want you to walk back up to John O'Groats, and then I want you to walk back down, because the Earth is four and a half thousand million years old, and you would have to walk four and a half thousand kilometers. But just think. It's the last 400 years that we've realized that the sun is a star and that we have planets that go round the sun and not round the earth, that we are part of the galaxy and that our galaxy is just one of 100 billion. What is going to happen with those large telescopes in the next 100 years? Well, I think I'll try and answer some of those questions in our next video. Thank you very much indeed.